everyone, welcome or welcome back to this channel. My name's Bronte and today we're going to do uh, a knitting chat. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I, I thought I would talk about um, my like most worn knits um, because I don't know, it just seems like a nice thing to talk about. <laughs> and. Um, I've made quite a lot of jumpers over the years and um, cardigans, so yeah, I thought I'd go through those, like, you know, the things that I've worn again and again and again and that I would definitely knit again. Um, actually, I don't know, just one of the things I've knitted twice, actually, um, but I just have the original one in this pile that's next to me. Um, so, yeah, I hope that's going to be interesting. Um, let's get started. Um, firstly, I just want to say I'm a little low energy today. Uh, I had every intention of being like super productive today, but um, I don't know. My brain had other ideas. And also the weather is mm, it's so grey and disgusting here. I'm so fed up of winter. Yeah. The light is not the best. I'm sorry about that. Um, anyway, uh, I'm wearing my Lakes Pullover by Ozetta. Um, this has this beautiful saddle shoulder and this really gorgeous um, high crew neck um, that's folded, um, you know, like a folded band, folded inside. Um, <clears throat> I knitted this in Derira Matura Gilead in the colour Amaranth. Um, I have to say, can you see that? Um, I think you will be able to. It's paled quite badly and I am really disappointed. Um, I've always sing the praises of Gilead on this channel and you know, I would still because it's a beautiful yarn and it comes in so many nice colours but um, my experience of it is that the, the quality of it slightly differs from batch to batch. Like, this batch pilled loads and I've got things that I'll show you that I knitted in Gilead like literally years ago and there's not one pill. Anyway, who knows? I love this sweater. I knitted the size two um, and it fits very nicely and oversized. Um, I definitely want to make another of these, but I think I might make it a bit longer. Maybe my like preferences are slightly changing and I just want the sweater a little, a little bit longer. And the sleeves, actually, I think if I reblocked it, the sleeves would grow. But eh, it's not too bad actually. Anyway, yes, so this is the Lakes Pullover. I will link everything in the description um, on Ravelry and you can find them for yourself. But yeah, uh, number one, Lakes. Number two is the Perec vest. Um, here we are, Perec. This is by Orlan Souche. Um, and this was knitted, uh, I knitted this in 2020, yeah, gosh, a long time ago now. Uh, it's got this lovely, like, um, detail on the shoulder seam and the side seam. It's not a seam, but it has this kind of slip stitch detail and then you can see the hem also has these beautiful details on it. Uh, this is knitted in... Madeline Tosh Merino Light held together with some Issaca Silk Mohair. Um, I wear this all the time. Um, I think partly because I love the colour uh, and the colour actually, the Madeline Tosh colour was a Stranger Things colour called Meet Me in the Basement, which I don't think they, they dye anymore um, because this was Madeline Tosh pre the company being sold. Um, so yeah, um, I love the colour and it's super soft because it's for, it's like a, a merino and a mohair. Um, it's very, very warm. So I actually this winter have worn this vest underneath this lakes pullover quite a lot as like a kind of like a thermal layer. Um, and it's been incredibly good for that. Um, hang on one second, the kitchen tap is dripping and it's driving me crazy. I really need to get that fixed. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, Perec. 
um, it's a beautiful pattern and um, I would like to make another one but I think also with like a, a combination of hand dye and mohair because I just think it's very beautiful and I have a couple of skeins of hand dyed merino singles in my stash which I think would work very nicely for this so there's that where am I going to put these Mm. I'll start here and then it's going to get too high so we'll think about that when that time comes um, <laughs> okay so then the next one I've just realised so many of these patterns by Olam and I think that's a testament to her incredible design skills she really is my favourite designer um, so yeah check out her patterns if you haven't made one of her patterns before I would really recommend them. They they have the most beautiful little details. They're straightforward to knit, but they look very beautiful when they're finished. The fit is excellent. Yeah, I, I love her patterns. So this one is also by Olan. This is for Brooklyn Tweed. This is the Morrow cardigan with this lovely uh, like stitch detail in the raglan and then down the front of the body as well, on either side of the button band. Um, this is knitted in Retrosaria Brushka. Um, I knitted this. When did I knit this? I think I knitted this in 2019. Uh, so a long time ago, end of 2019, I knitted this and I've never brush this with a pill brush or anything this is the most amazingly hard wearing cardigan um i love it i wish i had more of the yarn because i want to make i would have made the sleeves longer because they're a little short now because i always used to make sleeves too short i feel like lots of my like m older things that i knitted like pre 2020 the sleeves are too short for my liking now so that's annoying, but maybe I will um, add a different coloured cuff or something. Hmm, maybe I'll do that. Um, I have been meaning to come back to this and alter it, but I love it. it it's it's such a nice cardi, and the brushka is very lightweight, so it makes um, it's something that's warm but light. Uh, so yeah. I really like it and I like the blue buttons that I chose for this as well. I think those set the kind of rusty orange off really nicely. So this is, yeah, Morrow, Morrow Cardigan by Orlan Sushi. It's a Brooklyn Tweed pattern, but it's Orlan's pattern, but it's been released in a Brooklyn Tweed collection. So that's Morrow. I then have Canvas. This is a pattern by Orlan Sushi. Again, it was released as a Brooklyn Tweed pattern. Um, also, I should say for Orlan's patterns, um, all the three that I've mentioned so far, Morrow, Perec and Canvas, I did as test knits. Um, and I have one more in this stack that was a test knit from Orlan um, because I'm on her test knit list and I just love her patterns. I pretty much always, always join her test knits when they're available. Um, I haven't done one for a little while because she had a baby last year, so I think she's busy with other things. <laughs> um, but this, all my knits end up covered in my hair. I think I have such long hair it sheds. <laughs> um, this is canvas. So this is an all over texture. The cable goes down the back as well. This is an all over texture jumper. Um, got cable down the sleeve and then yeah the body has this texture in as well um i knitted this in durum nature gilead um i think you'll be able to see this is held up pretty damn well um this i knitted in right at the beginning of 2021 so actually two years ago oh my god yeah two years ago and it looks great still um I really love this sweater. Um, it's it just fits really nicely. Um, it's very easy to wear, and I always get compliments on this. I think you know this cable is very effective, um, and I'm really pleased that I chose this color. Um, 
I originally bought this yarn to make something else that I can't even remember what I decided that you know I can't remember what it was going to be and then when the test knit for this was announced I thought oh I have that Gilead I could use um so yes that's that's very nice Canvas by Olan Souche Um, okay, next one is another all land pattern. <laughs> um, I didn't do this one as a test knit. I was, um, I think at the time, I was definitely on her test knit list, but I think I was doing a preview knit for Brooklyn Tweed. Um, and so I had to prioritize the preview knit. So yeah, I'm just gonna drink tea because I, I made a peppermint tea for this chat. Okay. This is Bonnie by Olan Souche. Um, it's a really simple top down raglan cardigan in like a. I think the gauge is kind of an iron weight gauge to be honest. Um, I used a worsted weight uh, merino wool from Studio Donegal. Um, they have two worsted weights one is like just pure wool the other one is uh merino wool and this is the merino wool base the softer one um it's called soft donegal the base is called soft donegal um and i love this color i've never knitted with tweedy yarn before this but i think it looks lovely and i really like the green buttons i had these in my stash um my button stash and i think they match wonderfully um, and Bonnie has this nice short row collar, which is, I think is pretty lovely. Um, again, the fit of this is just wonderful. Um, I haven't been saying what sizes I knit. Pretty much in all Anne's patterns, I will make either the second or the third size, depending on, on the amount of ease. I normally choose something that's about a 42 inch bust from her. Um, I think I probably would maybe go for like a 44 now, um, but I made this one, uh, I made this cardigan a good year ago now, over a year ago now, so yeah. Um, anyway, Bonnie by Orlan Sush, I, I, I love it, I've gotten so much wear out of this, it's very very warm as well. Um, I think if I were to make this again, I wouldn't do the short row neckband because I like um, like this sweater. I like things to have like a high crew neck. So I think I would um, I think I would actually knit it so it was you know kind of up here, and I would put a buttonhole in the neckband as well. So I would do the neckband first and then do the button band and have a buttonhole up here. Um, yeah, that's that. Oh, and I forgot to say, this has some, um, on the cuff and the hem, it's got this like braided detail, which it looks so effective, but it's, it's also really easy to do. Um, she provides like really straightforward instructions, um, which is always nice. Okay, next up, I have the Annie tea. This is by Gina. Rock and Wagner for Pom Pom. This was in the Summer Stripes issue. I don't remember the issue off the top of my head. I'll look it up and put it on the screen. Um, I love that issue and I've actually made three Annie Tees because I love this pattern. I don't get so much wear out of it now, in all honesty, because um, where I work is very cold <laughs> and short sleeved things. I don't unfortunately get as much wear out of them um, because I need the the sleeve layer when it's knitwear season the shop is freezing um, so I'm thinking though that I can wear another jumper underneath this um, so I might try that next week but we'll see um, yeah so this is Annie it was inspired the pattern was inspired by Annie Albers um, who's a, an artist, a weaver. Um, so it's got, you know, uh, horizontal and vertical stripes, which I like very much. 
Um, it's really simple to knit, but it's super effective. Um, the pattern was written for cotton DK. I used a um, kind of like a somewhere between sport and DK, um, a wool, which was the Camarose Verdag Sold, which is their like, I think it means everyday wool. It's just like a really kind of basic, not basic, but like just like a nice simple wool. It's it's affordable. Um, and this pattern, it's knitted on a six millimeter needle. So um, it uses very little yarn. Um, so this is very light and lovely. Um, so yeah, I really like this. Um, uh, I, for a while, I just wore this absolutely to death. Um, I made this years ago, uh, probably in 2018, I think I made this. Um, and you know, it's not pilled really at all. Um, I just think it's, I just found an end that's poking out though. <laughs> um, I think it's, uh, it's held up remarkably well and I'm still really happy with the colors I chose. So yeah, I feel a bit nostalgic in a way about this as well. Cause I feel like this, this piece represents a bit of a shift in my knitting from like things not necessarily fitting me properly not i never used to use positive ease very much um and i feel like this represents a shift towards like more oversized things and like um i don't know knitting things that i really love and got a lot of wear out of so yeah this kind of has a bit of a special place in my heart and every time i take this out and put it on i, I love it so there's that one Annie by Gina Rockamoper. Um, next up, there is another Orlan pattern, which I've talked about before on my channel. Um, this is the Cameo Vest, uh, which was in the most recent issue of Liner Magazine, issue 16. Um, this is knitted in raw work, like, is it called original? Um, on the... On the label, it's labelled as a DK weight, but it's it's definitely a worsted weight. The pattern calls for worsted weight, um, and it's it works beautifully. Um, it's again, it's all over texture, um, and it has this gorgeous cable running down the front, um, and I really like the narrow ribbing. I think that's a very nice detail. So yeah, I've gotten so much wear out of this already. Again, I get lots of compliments on this. Um, and uh i just more hair um i just really love it i love i love the color i chose this really like really really pale gray uh it layers so nicely with all my stripy tops and it looks great with denim um it's just a lovely lovely pattern and i think i would like to make another um i would just have to decide on a color I was thinking about like a, a caramel sort of colour because um, I don't really have anything that's like a true caramelly colour really. Actually, maybe something I'm about to show you is considered caramel. So um, maybe, um, maybe I'm just telling lies. <laughs> but I think this would be nice in, in a caramel. Um, I think Think, uh, I think I would maybe like to use the raw work again. It's such nice wool. Anyway, that's, that's you know, that's that. Um, start a new pile. Okay, next up. <clears throat> next up, we have Stalactite. This is by Camille Brossel, um, and it was in an issue of Liner Magazine. I think it was issue four an old issue. Um, I made this in 2020. Um, I finished this just before the UK went into lockdown, um, like the week of actually, and it was my like super cozy companion all throughout lockdown. And now when I want something that's like gonna feel like a hug, I, I tend to reach for this or, or the lakes. Now I've made the lakes. Um, this is knitted in Darum Naturagilia and you can see like I've never brushed this with a pill brush 
it's in like it looks like new basically um yeah i love the oatmeal color um and the green as well i think works nicely um the green is two yarns it's an isiga silk mohair in like a bottle green color held with a strand of viola yarn in a dk base that i don't think she does anymore that i was able to get um at like an event that she did when she brought out her book um so yeah um it was like le left over because i made a hat with it um and i'm pleased that it's also in this sweater i don't really think you can tell that the yarn is hand dyed to be honest but that's i don't you know i don't really care it's like the color i thought it went well with this um so yeah this is in the size two um i think if i were to make this again i might make a size three i do still like the fit um but i just as i said i think earlier i just really like quite a lot of positive ease now um so yeah uh yeah love this sweater i think it's a nice pattern the only thing is that it's really annoying trying to keep the um, stalactite pattern consistent down the sleeve with the decreases because the pattern is a little vague about that i found the sleeves a headache honestly but they were worth it because it's such a nice pattern um so yeah also i will say that the stalactite actually like the actual stitch pattern is really easy to work um it looks really effect it looks really I think people, when I wear this at work, people think that it's complicated and I, I kind of explain how it's done and they kind of think, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I also like that it has a four stitch, a four stitch raglan. Um, I like that wide raglan seam. I think that's nice. Next, we have my Albini cardigan by Olan Souche. Um, this is the one I was saying is probably considered caramel, right? <laughs> um, <ta -da. laughs> um, the pattern is basically the pattern is this pattern is a DK weight version of the Bonnie cardigan. This came first and then she brought out the Bonnie. Um, I added this, uh, what would you call this? I don't know, like this fold collar. I added this um, to the pattern because I wanted a neat little cardigan with a fold collar. Um, and this really fitted the bill. Like, oh, I love this cardigan. I actually wore this to work yesterday. I love it. I think it goes with all my clothes. And it's, I used a really soft wool. It's in West Yorkshire Spinners Blue Face Luster DK in the colour Umber. Um, and I bought this yarn when they introduced the dyed shades because this yarn previously was only available in three undyed shades. Um, and then maybe maybe a year and a half ago now, they introduced dyed shades to the range and I instantly just fell in love with this one. Um, and I, it's so soft and it's, again, it's really tough wear, it's really hard wearing. Um, this pattern also has that lovely braid detail, um, the same as Bonnie. Can you see? I'm not doing a very good job of showing it. Um, and I love these buttons too. I used buttons from Pigeon Wishes shop. Um, the lady who runs that shop, Meg, is so lovely and I've, I've met her a couple of times, um, kind of at work actually and um yeah we occasionally kind of talk on instagram and um she sent me these buttons um for free which was so kind um <clears throat> she makes such nice buttons let me show you again um they are like these are resin ones um and they yeah they've got several colors in but one of the colors that runs through is kind of this caramel I think these ones are called like something to do with chai perhaps you know like a chai tea sort of thing um but yeah she sent me these ones and then two other sorts of button um one's like uh, uh this same sort of concept with the marley type thing 
um, with like a cream and then with a, a gold, like a mustard. And then one, one set is kind of pink and blue and red, sort of similar sort of thing. Really, really nice. Um, I'm just gonna drink some tea again. Um, sorry, my throat's feeling a little dry. Um, so yes, this is Albini by Olan Souche. And again, I would like to make another one of these. Um, and I actually think I would use the blue face luster again the, from my structure spinners. I'm, I would just pick a different color. It's a very nice green. And there's two lovely shades of blue. There's a pink, there's a purple, and then there's like a like a really, really yellow green, which is also lovely. So we'll see, we'll see. One day. And then, lastly, but not least, <laughs> lastly but not least, last but not least, um, I wanna show you the Minano sweater, which is by Noriko Ishikawa. This is actually, I feel like maybe this is slightly a wild card in this video because I finished this sweater uh, a couple of weeks ago. So it's, you know, like some of these things are from years ago. This is not, this is basically brand new. However, I've probably worn it 10 times since I finished it. I really like this sweater and I'm planning another one again. Um, the pattern calls, the pattern states sport weight. I used a light DK, which you could argue is sport weight. Um, but I used a light DK and I, think that the West Structure Spinners Blue Face Lester would work really nicely at this gauge. It's a 21 stitch gauge. I think uh, I actually measured this sweater now, it's washed and blocked. I think I actually ended up working to 22 stitches, um, which is fine. Uh, but yeah, I think the Blue Face Lester would work for this pattern. Um, and because it's so soft and it wears nicely, you know, that's a great bonus as well. So this is the Minano. Um, it's got some nice details around the neck. Um, honestly, I think this is the most simple thing I've ever knitted, but I feel like my wardrobe needed it. I don't have anything in the shade of blue. This is Retrosario Volvo. I only needed, I had I had to go into a seventh ball, but that was like basically for like the second sleeve cuff. That's when I went into the seventh. Um, so it's really lightweight. Um, so that's just over 300 grams of wool. I did significantly shorten the body, which is why I was able to get away with such a small quantity of wool. But um, yeah, it's beautiful. It's a very, it's a very well written pattern um, and um, there's the, it has these interesting short rows at the top of the, right at the top of the sweater. You work short rows, I, I can't really show it, you work short rows over the top of the raglan increases. So when you cast on for a top down raglan, the, the, the neck hole ends up being like rectangular, right? Because you've essentially cast on like this and you're increasing at four points, it ends up being a rectangle. Um, no matter whether or not you put short rows in the back, it's essentially a rectangular hole. What she does is she works short rows to kind of curve the corners of the, the inside of the rectangle, which I've never seen anybody do before. Uh, maybe d other designers have done it, I've never seen it before. And when I was following the pattern and kind of reading through and realizing what those tiny little short rows did, I was really impressed. I think that for me was kind of like a bit of a light bulb moment, like, okay, this is a really good pattern. Um, um, yeah, I love the gauge. I think DK weight is probably my favorite. I know a lot of these I've shown are actually worsted weight, um, but yeah, I think the sort of fabric I really love to wear, DK weight is the one. So, Minna no sweater. Again, I'll say again, um, I'll put the links in the description. So yeah, 
<clears throat> okay, let's move all this. Okay, that's your lot. Um, I could have probably picked out more um, sweaters, to be honest, but these were the ones, these are ones I've kind of had on rotation recently. These are the ones that if I just want something that's super cozy, I reach for something from this stack. Um, they're all patterns I would absolutely like recommend to you because I think they're great. Um, again, like I love Orlance patterns. She's such a fantastic designer. They're very well written. Um, Ozetta, who wrote this Lakes Pullover, is also a really great designer. Um, and I would always recommend her patterns too. Um, I do think they're more for intermediate knitters, purely because she, all that, uh, Ozetta, Haley, her name is, she uses lots and lots of short rows in her pattern patterns. And I think if you're not so comfortable with short rows, then, you know, uh, they may pose more of a challenge for you. Um, but the, it just means the fit is excellent. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this little, uh, kind of like a knitting update. Um, I know I haven't done one for a while and I know that lots of you like my knitting updates. If you're still watching, I would assume that maybe you do like my knitting updates. Um, so yeah, I'm really grateful. Thank you so much. I will take a moment to also kind of do a little bit of self promo and tell you that I have started a Patreon. Um, there will be a link in the description and I'm really excited about it. Um, I kind of want the Patreon community to be an extension of my YouTube and my Instagram, but kind of in more of like a community sort of way. Um, yeah, I don't really know how to talk about it. Um, but I will try. <laughs> um, I feel like it's going to be a place, it's going to be a place that I really want to share some things that are a bit more personal, um, more about my, my life. Um, I'll do weekly planner updates. Those will go out on Fridays. Um, I want to do kind of bi-weekly knitting updates. I'm thinking it would be nice to do posts about like knitting pattern roundups, uh, knitting patterns I've seen in the past month or so that I think are nice or that I would want to make, um, kind of adding them to like an imaginary queue, you know? Um, and yeah, I'll talk lots about stationery, planners, um, and yeah, anything else, if you're interested, you know, please suggest things you want to hear about from me because I really like that too you know, hearing from, from you all, because you're who I make this content for. So yeah. Um, yeah, the Patreon is three pounds a month. Um, and yeah, it will be quite a lot of, hopefully quite a lot of content every month. So, um, I would love it if you had a look, um, maybe, maybe joined, um, no pressure, but it's there now. And I'm excited about making content on that platform. I am a patron of several people on Patreon um, and I really like it as a platform, as a consumer of content. I, I really like it as a platform. It feels quite cosy um, and that's what I want my kind of content to feel like as well. So yes, that is self-promotion over. <laughs> um, okay. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back next week. What am I doing next week? Next week, I think is going to be a chat about my commonplace system. Um, so if you're interested in that, that will be next week. Um, it would be lovely if you could join me. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone.